is a special time. Amen. This is a time that is recognized as the fifth Sunday, but it's a special fifth Sunday because it's the last Sunday of the year. Amen. And we're thankful that if you're like me, you've been thinking about how good God has been. And you've been thinking about what God has done for you. And you just get excited and glad for knowing a God like our God. Yeah. Amen. And we're here to worship Him. In spirit and in truth. Yeah. How many have the spirit on today? Yeah. Amen. We need the spirit. Yeah. To lead us and to guide us. Yeah. We need the spirit to direct our pathway. Yeah. We need the spirit to speak to us. Yeah. To give us what we need. Yeah. Hallelujah. In the midnight hour, we need the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We need the Spirit to pick us up and encourage us. Because we're living in a day and a time where without God, we know that we would be in a lot of trouble. But thanks be to God that giveth us the victory. Anybody claiming victory? Anybody claiming that my God is a good God? My God is a merciful God. My God is a deliverer. My God is a way maker. I know him for myself. I'm not waiting on your testimony because I've had experience with him myself. I know him for myself. I know him so much that if you don't say anything, I got my own amen. I got my own praise. Hallelujah. There's nothing like knowing the Lord for yourself. Hallelujah. When you're in trouble and you get in trouble all by yourself, you need to call on that relationship that you have with God. So we thank you, Lord, for being a God. That is an awesome God to us. Let me be perfectly clear. Let me be crystal clear. I'm not talking about any old God. I ain't just talking about a I know there's a lot of gods out there. The Bible let us know a long time ago. There was a lot of gods. As a matter of fact, Israel was delivered out of Egypt. Egypt had a whole lot of gods. They had sun gods. They had moon gods. They all had a whole bunch of gods trying to imitate our God. You know, it's no wonder that men try to come up with other gods. Because who else? Who else do you want to emulate than someone who's great? Uh, the problem is, is that mankind has always been the same. We want to... We want to manipulate that which we emulate. That's right. So we don't mind praising a God, but we want him to do what we want him to do when we get ready to do it. We want to move him from here, there, and everywhere. But I've got no notice to serve on somebody today that our God is not a play toy. He's a God to be worshipped. He's a God to be magnified. He's a God to be glorified. We don't get to take him and put him in our suitcase. They carry him on the airplane when we go to California. We don't get to move him from here and there on our mantelpiece at our fireplace. But our God is an awesome God. He's so awesome that he has residence down on the inside of us. I want to make sure you understand that we are not serving a God that somebody made with wood, hay, or stubble. But we're serving the God. The one that has no beginning and no end. The one that has no power. I'm not just talking about any old God. 
somebody called on their God. They already called on their God. They called on him all day and all night. The prophet said, call on him. Maybe he's on a trip. Call on him. Maybe he can't hear you. Call on him a little bit louder. Maybe he's a little busy. And when you get finished calling on your God, They say that his name is so awesome that you can't pronounce it. They put a G and then a slash and a D. But the God that we serve was made in the likeness of man. He took off his robe of glory. And he put on this filthy flesh. He came through a woman. And he was not half man and half God, but he was all man and all God, all at the same time. I said, how can you be 100% and 100% and be 100%? Mm. God can. This is the only God. This is the only God that foretold his birth. Hundreds and thousands of years before he came. This is the only God that had prophets that prophesied what he would do. How he would do it. That prophesied and foretold. He's the only God. The only God that said that he was going to die. And he was coming back on the third day. He's the only God. And you know why we know he's still alive? Because where they buried him is empty. But where our hearts are is not empty. Somebody over here found it one day. Somebody over here found it one day. Thank God I found it one day. I'm not looking up in the sky. I'm not looking where he is. I know where he is. He's on the inside of me. Say it. 
about it. And when I get finished talking, Elder Johnson can talk about it. When he get finished, Bishop, God knows he can talk about it. Huh? When I get finished, Brother Ray start talking about it. Then you get to start talking about it. Huh? Oh yeah, all, these, all my ministry brothers, all y'all talk about it. And if y'all could get up here, which you can't, the sisters would be talking about it. So if you can't get up here and talk about it, we'll talk about it. Glorify you. Jesus. Magnify you. How many are glad to be here in the house of the Lord? How many are glad that we have seen a year's worth of Sundays? And now we are coming down to this last day. And I have a word that I want to drop into your spirit on today. We're reading from the book of 2 Kings. And the sixth chapter, turn with me to the second book of Second Kings and turn to the sixth chapter in the book. I'm tell you a story. Amen. About one of the many men of God. Amen. In this book. And I'm going to read a verse and then I'm going to tell you what the story was and then we'll Jesus. share with you a thought Jesus. the focus of our of this particular scripture will be on the 16th verse And the Bible is telling us a story here at the beginning of this chapter regarding Elisha, who was a prophet. Elisha um, followed Elijah. And when Elisha was with Elijah. The Bible let us know that Elisha refused to leave the man of God, Elijah. And Elijah was sent to different places and as he traveled to those different places as God led him, Elisha said, I will not leave you. As my soul liveth, I will not leave you. And Elijah asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah said, if you see me when the Lord takes me up, it'll be so. And as time went on, the Bible says that there was a great whirlwind and Elisha saw Elijah taken up. And he was blessed. And one of the first things Elisha did as he was leaving and he picked up his master's mantle. He was walking back to the river. And he spoke, he said, where is the God of Elijah? And he smoked that water and the water opened up. That let him know he's right here. I haven't left you. I'm still right here. Hallelujah. And so Elisha now is one of the prophets. And, and the Bible goes on to say that Elisha was dwelling with some of the other prophets. And they decided that they needed to go to another area. And they made plans to go to that area. And that's how the scripture starts out. But my, more of my attention is towards the 8th verse. Where uh, the Bible tells us that there was a war between the Syrians and the Israelites. And the Syrians were doing just like anybody else would do in a battle. Try to figure out 
where your enemy is going next and try to ambush them there. If they know they're headed east, they would try to head in that direction and figure out where they would be so that they could ambush them. But the problem was that every time the king told his men where we should go, and they made up in their minds where they should go, every time that happened, Elisha, who was with the Israelites, who had was nowhere near the king of Syria, the Lord spoke to Elisha and told Elisha where they were headed. So he did this over and over again to the point that every time the Syrians would go in one direction, Elisha, to set a trap for them, Elisha was told by God, don't go over there, go over here. So the Israelites would follow what Elisha told them to do, and they were always in another place where they, where they expected them to go. It's just like if you're traveling down 20, if you're coming from Florence, now you know you're on 20, and you say, let's go to Bishopville and let's get him before he gets to Bishopville. And then the Lord speaks and say, go to something. And you go to something and you go right past him. And then you're coming back, then you're coming up from something. And they say, well, let's go to Hopkins East over. Let's catch them when they come through there. And the Lord said, go to something. Go, go to Bishopville. And then you go to Bishopville. And this happened over and over again to the point that the king of Syria got mad. And he said, which, which one of us is actually working for the Israelites? And, and one of them stopped and said, nobody here is working for the Israelites. But the Israelites have something that we don't have. They got a man of God that is talking to God. And God is telling him what you're whispering in your bedchamber. He's telling him what you're thinking. So, um, so they, uh, the king got upset, and the king wanted to find out where this man was. Where is this Elisha? And they told him he is in Dothan. So in the 14th verse, the Bible says that, so he sent a bunch of his horses, his chariots, and a great host, and they came by night. There they go by night again. Oh, we got to try to do something by night. Watch out who shows up at night time. <laughs> got to be careful about people's knocking on your door at night. I remember some years ago when we lived out in Ridgeway. We lived out in the country. Dark out there, man. One night, me and my wife was home. And there's a scripture that says, Beware lest ye entertain strangers, angels unaware. 1.30 in the morning. <coughs> Somebody knocking on the door. I'm going to the door. My wife came out of that room <laughs> like her hair was on fire. Don't open that door! And I had to talk to him. It was a lady that was apparently had car trouble or something. But I said, Lord, I hope that wasn't an angel. Because <laughs> I just missed my blessing. <laughs> so we had a conversation with this person through the door. Because <laughs> the door wasn't coming open, baby. <laughs> oh, Sister Doc, I'm letting that door come open. <laughs> So don't go knocking on nobody's door by night, because you may not get an answer. Amen. You better, you better be knocking on the door that you know. If you knock on the door you don't know, who that? You better know it's Harry. Harry? Harry who? You gotta come with the last name. So come, with some, come with some credentials, man. Slide your, slide your ID onto the floor or something, man. This door ain't opening, but. But they came by night, all of these horses and chariots, and a great host, 
after one man. That one man. Son of great hopes. Outnumbered. And the Bible says they compass the city about. That's a lot of people to come after one man. But you know what? When somebody knows that God is on your side, they recognize that. Oh, they recognize it. And you don't have to sound the trumpet. You don't have to walk around your job with a golden crown and a staff and a white robe for somebody to know that you know somebody who got some power. There's something about a child of God that somebody who doesn't know God can recognize there's something about I'll tell you, I'll tell you this and we'll move on. But I'll tell you this thing that happened to me, and this was this was really interesting. But I was taking care of one of my patients. And she's a little quirky. She's a little quirky. But I never had a discussion with her about church or anything. It's always business. And she came in and I don't know how we got on the discussion, but she said something about how she can she can discern spirits, things like that, and uh, and so I'm listening to her and she's talking about how you know she can see different things and all that. And I'm okay, whatever. I'm just gonna stick to the medicine and try to get through this. <laughs> and so then I didn't talk to her about church or anything. I had no no mention of anything. To her. And she said. Mm. Are you a preacher? And I was like, uh, you know, I don't, I mean, this is my business, but I don't talk about it. But yeah, 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 I preach every now and then. She said, I thought so. And she looked at me, now this is what got me. This is what got me. She said, she was looking at me and she was, she was frowning up her face. She said, but you, she said, no, you ain't. You ain't no Baptist. She said, and you ain't Methodist. And you're not Presbyterian. That's not what you are. He said, she said, you're something like, she said, you're something like a Pentecostal, but not exactly. <laughs> that was like, whoa. <laughs> she got my attention in. Now you can't see ghosts, can you? <laughs> whoa, whoa. I mean, she came right down the line, man. I'm like, whoa, whoa. When she said that, she said, what are you saying about Apostolic? She was like, uh-huh, yeah, I know. But... So anyway, <laughs> that was just interesting. That was interesting. But people can recognize when there's something that you're, something there's an effect on your life. You don't have to go around and blaring a horn and, and, and chanting and screaming and speaking in tongues in order for somebody to know that God is with you. Because when they get in trouble, they will call you and they will say, hey, come pray for me. I, I, need, I, need, I, need, you, I need you to pray for me. Amen. Somebody had that experience? I know you had that experience. So the Bible says that he sent all of these people around him. And sent his hope, all these horses and these chariots. And, and, and they compass the city about. And the Bible said that when the servant of the man of God was risen early. I'm in the 15th verse. And gone forth. So Elisha's servant got up early. He went out. And he looked, and behold, there was a host compassing the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And his master answered, and he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they 
that be with them. Yeah. Mm. And he goes on to say that Elisha prayed. How many thank God for prayer? Yeah. How many know how to take it to the Lord in prayer? Yeah. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, so he was looking and he saw all of the trouble all around him. But then the Bible says that the man of God prayed and to open up his eyes. Why? Because the man of God saw something that he didn't see. So when the man of God prayed for him, he opened his eyes and the Lord, the Bible said the Lord opened his eyes and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And so the picture here is that there was a lot of trouble but even though there was a lot of trouble the man of God saw what the servant couldn't see. And he had to try to encourage him, fear not, because the ones that are with us are more than the ones that are with them. So I want you to tell yourself, it's almost over. It's almost over. We've been dealing with a lot of things down through 2018. But you got to encourage your heart today. And tell yourself. Don't you have to tell your neighbor. You can tell yourself. Self is almost over. When we're going through things, sometimes we just need to have a word that can pick us up and let us know that whatever we're dealing with is going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Amen. Trouble can be all around you. But they that be what? With us. Are more than they that be with them. It doesn't matter what you. It looks like to you. What God is able to do. Is greater than what anything in this world. Can do unto you. There is a problem that's greater than God. There's not a sickness that's greater than God. There's not a inch of anything that is greater than God. Whatever the problem is. Hallelujah. We got to encourage ourselves that it's almost over. Hallelujah. We got to tell ourselves it's almost over. Amen. You know, there is something that we have that we need to make sure that we utilize that God has given us. There is he, there he has equipped us with strength and ability to endure whatever comes our way. I don't like struggle. You don't like struggle. But whatever struggle comes, no matter how much it hurts, no matter how problematic it is, God has not allowed you to go through that thing without giving you what you need in order to make it to the other side. You have started on this journey and the Lord knows your ability. He knows what you're able to handle. But the Bible says that he will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. But God is faithful who will with that temptation make a way to escape. I'm talking about a God who can take a problem and provide a solution with the same problem. I don't know who else could do something like take my bill and get me out of my bill with my bill. But God can. God can. And when he equips us and when he builds us up and when he strengthens us, he gives us what we need to be able to make it. Sometimes we're crying in the midnight hour. Sometimes we just hurt so bad we don't know what to do next. Sometimes we're confused. Sometimes we're upset. But God has given us what we need 
in order to make it. And what I want to do is I want to stir up something on the inside of you that I know you have. I know you have it. And it's a simple four-letter word, hope. You got to keep hope alive. You got to keep hope alive. If you're going to make it through, you got to keep a positive attitude. I don't care how bad it gets. You got to be able to always say, God is still able. Huh? I don't care how broke you get. You got to be able to say, in your brokenness, God is still able. You got to be able to be a witness to be able to tell to tell somebody that when you are going through it. I'm not talking about when you see your way out. It's easy to praise God when you see your way out. It's easy, you know, and I have done this and I have, and I'll confess this, that I'm guilty of praise, of, of complaining. I'm guilty of, 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 of doubting until God blesses me. But you know what I said to myself some years ago? I said, I'm through with that. I said, I am not going to doubt God all the way to my blessing. Your God is an awesome God. You know, do you not know that he has blessed me when I doubted him? Yeah. He, you, do you not know that he will bring you out when you don't believe that he'll bring you out? And he does it anyway. And he does it so that maybe the next time. My son will understand. But thank you, Lord, because as time went on, you brought me out enough times for me that I refuse to dishonor your name by doubting you all the way to my blessing. But what I'm going to do, what I've learned to do, what I'm, I should say, learning to do, is I'm learning that when I'm in the middle of my mess, I'm, I'm, talking, about, I'm talking about can't see no light mess. I'm talking about that it is looking bad mess. I'm not talking about going to get bad or this could be bad. I'm talking about it already is bad and it's going to get worse bad. And I've been in those spots and I have learned that I don't know what y'all do, but I got a special place. And I go to my special place and I tell the Lord, Lord, thank you. I thank you for what you've already done. You see, when you begin to thank God for what he's already done, then you invite that positive experience into your heart. Then you begin to realize that when I was sick, the Lord touched me. When I was broke, the Lord helped me. When I was down, the Lord brought me out. When I had no way of getting through, somehow he blessed me. And what that does is it builds up my hope. Now I begin to realize that if he brought me through that, I believe he can bring me through this thing. Even though it looks real bad, I'm going to hold on to him. <laughs> Let me go a little medical on you. Not super medical, but a little medical on you. You just had a baby. Your wife and I. She put the baby. You didn't have a baby. But your wife had a baby. You ought to tell the Lord thank you. Because we can't handle that. We can't handle that. All you brothers, mom, say amen. We can't handle that. Lord ain't make it that way. We can't do that. <laughs> but somewhere along the way, when she can see, I don't know the details, but I would imagine at some point you got a positive pregnancy test. Well, you might. So what happened when you got that positive pregnancy test? Got excited. Got excited. You got excited because the test was positive. But you didn't have no baby. 
Well, what are you excited for? You ain't had no baby though. <laughs> but what happened was that your wife uh, is carrying, is equipped in such a way, right, that she has the, for lack of a better term, the tools necessary for this child to grow. Hmm? But, even though she had all the tools necessary for the child to grow, there was a requirement of something from the father, the seed from the father had to fertilize the egg. And once the egg was fertilized, it is a microscopic seed, microscopic, well not microscopic egg, but really small. And you're starting out with very, very small things. Huh? As big as you want. You started out you ain't start out like that. But there was a seed from the father that got with the egg from the mother. The seed from the father fertilized the egg from the mother. The mother is carrying the egg and everything else that it needs to nurture this child, to bring it to fruition, to completion. But while, when that egg gets fertilized, she didn't feel nothing. She didn't feel nothing. Feel nothing. You don't go, oh, oh, my egg just got fertilized. <laughs> no. For any women, woman who has not been pregnant yet, I'll let you know, you never feel your egg getting fertilized. <laughs> you don't feel it. You don't feel it. But it happened. We can't go by our feelings all the time. We got to go by what we know the word says. So now the father has now, see the father's seed has now fertilized the mother's egg. Now everything that needs to take place is set in motion. And the father doesn't have to do anything else anymore. He's done. All he has to do is that seed is all that's necessary. Unfortunately, too many guys do this. That's another. That's another discussion. But for the purposes of this discussion, we're talking about for as far as that child is growing. Once the seed from the father fertilizes the egg from the mother, then there is a series of things that start to take place. Huh? Now, when you begin to have a fertilized, that egg initially becomes fertilized, it doesn't take long before hormones start to produce. And those hormones are designed, are designed to make sure that what the, what the seed from the father and that the egg, to make sure that that egg gets implanted, gets implanted into the wall of the uterus. And what happens is when you get a positive, or she, she gets a positive pregnancy test, 
The reason why it turned positive is because we are checking the hormone levels. Y'all with me? Yeah. We're checking hormone levels to see if those levels are high enough, which indicates that what the Father has already done and has now incorporated into the egg has produced a viable pregnancy. And now it's settled into the settled into the uterus. Huh? And it's locked in there. And it's not going to move. Huh? And now, when that happens, and you get a positive test, you get what? Upset? No, you don't get upset. When you get a positive pregnancy test, you get excited. Why do you get excited? Because you believe that you're going to have a child. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Most people get excited. <laughs> some, some people may get upset. But most people get, when you're looking for a child, you get excited. Why? Because you have now proof that, that there's a viable pregnancy. Huh? Now, she can't really feel it growing in there, but every now and then, she gets some side effects to the, to the, to the growth of this, of this child. And, and, and as the hormone levels increase and the environment changes so that this baby can grow and, and grow, develop naturally, huh? That, that she'll begin to feel a little nauseous every now and then. She may, she may have a little, you know, a little, some headache and, and her feet may swell. Huh? Lips swell. Nose, everything swells. It's like swelling. Huh? Huh? But, but before you get there, this is my point, before you get there, when she's one month pregnant, when she's two months, huh? You, you're, not, you're not upset going, is, she, is it still there? Is it still there? No, you have the proof. The proof is that we got a positive pregnancy test. Huh? Oh, no, we got a positive pregnancy test. So because we got a positive pregnancy test, we're expecting that there's going to be a baby that comes out of this. Huh? And when, and as time goes on, you may have some good days, and you're going to have some bad days. You're going to have some hills to climb. You're going to have some struggles. But as you go through it, you've still got in your hope, in your mind, a hope that there's a baby that's going to come out of this. Your hope doesn't diminish because you have a headache. All you do is you tell yourself, I have a headache. But that's because I'm pregnant. I have fat feet. But that's because I'm waiting on my promise. Huh? I've got nausea. But I'll deal with it. Because I'm waiting on my deliverance. I can't see it. But every now and then, I can feel something moving on the inside. And every now and then, it feels good to know that I still got that hope on the inside of me. So you don't need to let your hope down because God will let us know every now and then. He'll let you know that I'm still here. I'm still here. You're going through some things, but I'm still on the inside. You're going through some heartaches. You're going through a test and a trial, but you hold on because the test is already positive. You're going to come forth and it's going to produce fruit, but you just got to hold on in there. You got to hang in there. You can't let up and you can't let out. You can't let go. You just keep believing. As a matter of fact, every negative thing that happens to a person's body while they're pregnant is proof. Huh? It is proof that you're pregnant. Huh? You are not pregnant. Well, now, when you stop feeling stuff, then you get worried. Oh, yes. When I stop feeling, I'm getting nervous. Huh? Because I want to make sure the baby's still moving. And then the baby get quiet after a while. I get nervous. 
Huh? You know what's up? My saints don't get nervous when they don't feel the baby moving. You ought to get nervous if you don't feel the baby moving every now and then. Because every now and then. Huh? You mean to tell me you don't never feel the baby moving? Oh, you better make sure you might need a shock or something. Get that baby back away or something. Huh? But you gotta, I want to encourage you to let you know that when you're going through all of these things, just like that pregnant mama goes through these things, she's going through them with joy because she knows that the end is near. Everything that you go through has an end. Everything that you go through will have a completion. You will not go through your problem indefinitely. There is an end until you get to that completion. So what we need to do is instead of getting upset when we feel negative things, we need to get excited because we got to know that God is still working. He's still on the move. The Lord has put something inside of me. He's put the hope of glory inside of me. He put the hope inside of me and now it's in there and it's working. Now maybe some days I don't feel good. And maybe some days I just don't feel like taking another step. Maybe some days I'm happy and some days I'm sad. But all of the days, all of my good days, I have to say outweigh my bad days. I have to say that in spite of whatever I'm going through, I still believe that God is going to bring me out. And I'm not going to let the devil get the victory. I'm going to hold on to what God has put inside of me. And I'm going to continue to press my way forward. Because I know that if I keep pressing my way on, that the Lord is going to bring it to pass. And this is something that may be hidden from view, but you feel it. You don't have to see it, but you got to feel it. Elisha's servant couldn't see what God had done. But we, and we may not be able to see what God have done. But we got to feel it on the inside of us. We going through another year, we got to feel it. We got to feel God moving. It's not always going to feel good. Sometimes you're going to cry. Sometimes you're going to struggle. But you got to know that he put it on the inside of me. And I'm going to hold on. And I'm not going to give up. I got this hope. And I refuse to let it go. I believe if I hold on to this hope long enough that the Lord is going to bring me through. Hallelujah. And even when you're delivering a prayer, when Sister Martha was delivering that baby, as you get closer and closer to delivery time, it doesn't get better and better. It gets harder and harder. The pains come more frequently. The discomfort comes more frequently. But you're getting excited at the same time. Because you know I'm getting close. I'm getting close. I'm getting close. See, the devil wants to use a trick on us. The devil wants to make you stop calling on Jesus. Because you are hurting real bad. But I've learned a long time ago. That when you're hurting real bad. That's because he's about to show up. He's on his way. He's on his way. When I feel the pain, I try to say, he's on his way. He's about to come. I'm going to keep on calling him. I'm not going to call him less. I'm going to call him more. Why? Because I understand in my mind that the Lord is on the way. There's a old saying that says it gets darkest before day. I have, I used to work a job that was 12 hours overnight. That is a true saying. It gets real dark just before day. But if you can hold on one, if you can hold on, you're going to see that day. If you hold on, you're going to see it. If you, go, if you hold on, you're going to get your deliverance. You just got to hold on. It's a mystery. It is a mystery. It's, it's hidden from us. But that's why we have to feel it. Hallelujah. Because it's not plain to the naked eye. Amen. Everybody can't see this. But when you, what we see spiritually, we have to see not with our natural eye, but we see with our spiritual eye. I believe the man of God wrote, he said, behold, 
I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. How can this be? This is a mystery. How is it that there are those that will be dead in the grave and will rise up? And they've been dead for hundreds, thousands of years. This is a mystery. We cannot understand it. But what it is, is there's something inside of them. When they went down in the grave, something down, went down in there with them. And when they went down there with them, it didn't leave them. It stayed right there. So this is a mystery because man can't understand how can a man be born when he's old. Mystery. Can't understand how can a man come back when he has been gone. Yes, Lord. The prophet looked at the valley and the spirit of the Lord said, Son of man, can these bones live? Not, not dead men. Huh? Not dried up corpses. Bones. Flesh is gone. Unrecognizable. All we have is bones. How is it that these bones can live? Huh? He said, Lord, thou know. Oh, yes, he knows. How many are glad that you don't know everything? I got glad a long time ago that I don't know everything. I thank God that I don't, and I thank God for what I don't know. Hallelujah. Because it can causes me to just fall and before God. Hallelujah. But he brought those bones back to life. How is that possible? Physiologically, it's not possible. Medically, it's not possible. But the Bible said that with God, all things are possible. It's got nothing to do with what your brain says. It's got to do with the Word of God. Because the Word of God was in the beginning was the Word. Before there was time, there was the Word. Before there was an earth, there was a word. Before there was wind to blow or air to breathe, there was the word of God. Everything that we see was spoken into existence by the word of God. So there is nothing that is outside of God's ability to bring back and to resurrect at any given point in time. So it doesn't matter if the bones were dry for hundreds of years. All he had to do was speak to the bones. Speak to them. And they will live. And those bones got together in the valley. Lazarus was dead for four days. No problem. He still had skin on his bones. That was easy. Huh? Lazarus come forth. Hallelujah. So that's why the man of God said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall all sleep. We shall, we shall not all sleep. Amen. Correction. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. How is it possible? I don't know, but I know somebody who does. His name is Jesus. He came down for 42 generations just to make a way for me to be saved. And I'm so glad that I have a chance to be saved. So glad that I've got a knowledge of who he is. And I'm not going to let anybody take away that knowledge from me. I'm going to hold to it with all I've got. Because all I've got, don't have money, but i got Jesus. I don't have big houses and land, but i got Jesus. All I need is Jesus. I need to keep him on the inside of me. I need to keep him alive and well. I need to keep feeling him moving on the inside of me. Yes, I need you to move me. I need you to move on the inside of me. I need to know that there's will flowing water, rivers of water coming out of me. Huh? I need to feel it. I need to know it. I need to experience God moving on the inside of me. Because
because I need to know that when I'm going through my troubles, I can call on the name of the Lord, and the Lord is going to deliver. Hallelujah. When it gets hard, that's all right, I'll get harder. Huh? When it gets hard, I can call on Jesus more. Huh? When it gets tough, I know how to call on him even louder. Jesus! Now, son of David, have mercy on me. You're the God that formed the earth and the heavens and all that is here. You're able to deliver me out of this. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. It's almost over. You're almost near the end. All you got to do is hold on to what you've got. Hold on to what you know. Don't let that devil steal it from you. Hold on to what you know. Hold on to what God has already done for you. Encourage your heart. Keep your hope alive. Don't let your hope go down. Keep your hope alive. And by and by, he will come to you. Pray for you. Oh God, give me a little bit more of that song, your song, earlier today. Yeah. Choir, come on up here, help me. Yes, Put down the baby. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more of that song that he said he'll do just what he said. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Anybody else want to hear that besides me? Yeah. He'll do just what he said. Just what he said. He said he'll, he'll touch it. Make it plain. Hallelujah. I'm not lying. 